We have now made it to Singapore. It's actually our first time here, so we are really excited to explore the whole city. We arrived yesterday and we spent a day getting acclimated, buying a SIM card. We already tried some great food here, but that's, I think, our main mission for our stay here in Singapore, is to try as much great food as we can and also, of course, see the main sights. And as we're really close to Chinatown, we're gonna start here with some breakfast. to have a proper traditional Singaporean breakfast. They have different combos you can choose from here and they each contain uh, some kind of toast, then two soft boiled eggs you can dip the toast in and some kind of coffee which is also quite complicated to order because they have different like combinations of coffee, condensed milk and evaporated milk. We've gone for the classic, which is the coffee with evaporated milk, we think. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's called Kopi C, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> Give me my iced coffee. I love how they serve the coffee in a beer glass here. Yeah? And it's super strong. I think it's that way because, yeah, it's evaporated milk. So it has less volume and it just makes the coffee taste more strong and probably it's also just strong coffee. The breakfast here consists of slices of toast with a lot of butter and then also some coconut jam flavored with pandan leaves. We're very interested to see how it tastes. Okay, so now to the soft boiled eggs. They're supposed to be very soft boiled. Yeah, it's super soft, but that's what we expected. Oh, a lot of butter. It does taste quite rich, but also quite nice. And we learned that Kaya is Malay for rich, so that makes oh, yeah. sense. <laughs> it does make sense with this egg. It does taste a bit like French toast, to be honest. And we also ordered some French toast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this French toast is also very rich, and the jam is. It tastes a bit like a coconut pudding, which I kind of like. I mean, everything is super delicious. We probably shouldn't start every day like this because this is not the healthiest breakfast option I think there is in Singapore, but it is the classic one. This does feel a little bit like breakfast designed so that everyone likes it. I mean, crispy toast with sugar and butter in between. Who's not gonna like it? This street is so cute. Everybody's eating outside and there are also some really nice bakeries and we definitely have to come back here. Simon bought himself a six Singapore dollar kombucha. Still one of the cheaper beverages you can buy here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually water is so expensive. It's with prebiotics, so you know, it's gonna be good for all the food that we're gonna eat. And we already had a lot of kombucha in Sri Lanka and I believe it's made me 10 years younger, you know. It's, it's the secret to my youth, I think. You wouldn't believe I'm 49, but this stuff really works. So the next thing we've got planned after this very filling breakfast is actually to have lunch, which is <laughs> not the best idea. Well, but, maybe um, we'll walk around a bit first. Yeah, we probably should look at Chinatown a little bit more. Everything is super picturesque. I think every side street and every shop has something for the eyes. There are two places here that we really want to check out. One is the Chinatown complex, which is like a huge complex where you can have a lot of food, like a lot of hawker stalls are there. And then the other one is the People Center here in Chinatown, which is a very big skyscraper, which is a mix of shops and apartments. And they have a food court as well. I'm not really sure how much we're gonna <laughs> be able to eat, but we're gonna definitely just check it out and have a look. So this is the People's Park building with the shopping center and the food center as well. 
So all these food centers we're visiting here in Singapore are actually called hawker centers and they've got quite the interesting history because back in the 19th century there were a lot of people that just needed some money and they just set up their little street stall and sold their food there and then in the 60s of the 20th century the government started to think it was a bit unsanitary and maybe it didn't look too good like all these people selling food on the streets so they developed these centers where all the hawkers would be able to sell their food in sanitary conditions. It's even a bit more convenient that way because you can just go to one center and have this variety of food and just taste a bit of everything. So now there are over 110 hawker centers all over Singapore and they're even developing more and more. So here when you enter the People's Park, it's a lot of different shops, a lot of jewelers and watch shops and massage places and also a lot of places where you can buy sneakers. So if you're into that, that's great. Um, but we're actually trying to find the food center here. Not really sure where it is, but somewhere here. <laughs> I think a lot of the stalls are outside. Yeah, that could be outside or we have to go up. Look at these buttons. This world one looks really cool. We found all the food stalls outside. Let's just walk around a bit. I don't know if we're gonna eat something here because we want to eat at the People's Complex. Chinatown Complex. At the Chinatown Complex. <laughs> we are at the People's Park Complex. Um, yeah, but it looks really cool. Okay, so when you go outside, then you go into this other building and then at the ground floor, that's where all of the food stalls are. And you've got these tables, you can just sit here and grab a bite to eat. And outside you've got market stalls to just buy some snacks. Maybe that's what we're gonna do actually, just grab a snack. But this is a great place to grab a bite to eat as well. So many stalls. Just a small snack for the road. So this is a pork and scallion pie. It's still very warm and oily. It smells super good. That is nice. Nicely spiced pork, some fresh scallions, sesame on top, warm, very cozy. Sounds good. Mm. How are we gonna eat lunch after this? Manage. Yeah, this one looks very gluttonous and fatty. It has pumpkin and red bean paste inside. It's a heavy one. You can definitely taste the red beans. It tastes a bit starchy, if that makes sense. And also very sweet. And I feel like it's not gonna be my favorite dessert, but at the same time, I can't stop eating it. So it's a little bit addictive. And now leave me alone with my dessert. Walking around in the city is super impressive. I mean, you've got all of these skyscrapers everywhere, but then also these much smaller, calmer alleys with not so tall buildings. And everyone that's been to Singapore will tell you that this city is so clean. And it is true. I mean, even in this alley, which is probably not the, <laughs> the nicest it's looking full of one, waste containers. <laughs> yeah, it's full of. Yeah, waste containers and it's just like a back alley, but it's still quite clean. It smells nice. <sighs> City <Fresh> air. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think we also just wanted to walk through the smaller alleys, the garbage alleys. As I think they call them. They are my favorite. <laughs> but I mean, they are very picturesque. Yeah, I think you do have a bit of a weird taste. I know. Regarding like picturesque spots, I mean it's not the most Instagrammable spot here. I think I like this slightly dystopian alleys as well. Yeah. I it don't know. Cool. It feels nice between all of these skyscrapers. So 
it's definitely not as full here right now in the Chinatown complex. A lot of stores are closed, um, but still I think there's a lot more than we can eat here. Uh, yeah, and it's probably because it's Sunday. I think so, it has to be because it's Sunday, because we heard that during the week, because people are working around here, it's way more full than right now. But yeah, there are so many stores to choose from. It's very hard to decide. Yeah. I think chicken and rice is just a Singaporean staple. And I've gone for the version with soy sauce. And it's really good. The chicken is super soft. And the sauce is also really nice. It's soy sauce, but a really thick one. And then we also ordered some morning glory with it, just from a Thai stall. I think that's the fun part, to just mix different Asian cuisines with each other because they're all available here. That's so cool. I actually wanted to go with some roasted duck, but apparently it's so popular that they were sold out already. And so I opted for the char siu pork, which is always great. I mean, you just get some pieces of nicely marinated pork. It's very chewy and it's got great flavor. I poured a lot of chili sauce on top and for me that's one of the best simple dishes that you can have. It's got lots of flavor and I really like it. We also wanted to do one other thing which is try some durian because on all of our trips before in Asia we've never tried it and here in Chinatown we've seen a really cool stall that seems to be super popular and so I think that's the perfect place to try it. Okay, so the stall we went to actually had some durians, but we were advised by someone that it's not durian season right now, so the durians being sold right now aren't really of the highest quality. And so what we decided to do instead was to come to a restaurant called 99 Old Trees to try some of their durian creations because they have all kinds of durian related dishes and we went for two different ones. Um, one is called the stinky bowl that is made with the flesh of durian and I think it's supposed to be a good introduction into the deliciousness of durians. And then we also got two baked durian goods that have durian inside and I think it's going to be interesting to try them. Yeah, I think it's like French pastries. This is made with durian that was picked during the season and then frozen. Does it stink? It's like the first mm -hmm. question. <laughs> and it has a little bit of stinkiness, definitely. And there's also, I think, some raw flesh on top as well. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty nice. It's probably not as stinky as the real fruit, but mainly you can also just taste the sweetness of the fruit. And I quite like the taste, actually. Oh yeah, it smells like garbage. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the first thing you taste is, I think, a bit like the smell, so it's not nice. Then the deeper taste and like the aftertaste is quite good. It has a nice sweetness and the guy at the counter said it's the entry drug. So let's see if we get addicted. After you've had like two or three spoons, you want to keep eating. <laughs> Maybe you will see that this happens to me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> now let me try the pastry durian cream inside. This is not as intense as the other one. Mm -hmm. I think I do get durian pastries or durian sweets and why they are so popular because it's just something new. I think it's a bit like trying cheese at first. You think it's weird like maybe like some older more intense cheese and when you get older and you eat more of it you start to like it because it has something very distinctive about it. One day I'm really gonna love it. <laughs> so not, not now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see when that day comes. Mm. That was another full day of food. I think we already love this city and we could probably spend weeks just exploring all of the hawker centers of Singapore, but we probably shouldn't because that would be very bad for our waistline. Um, this was a very delicious day, I think, and a good introduction into Singaporean culture because it's all about food as well. You know, people here love food and I think that's also why we like this city so much and I think we can sympathize with the people quite a lot um, because that's just how we would roll as well. 
So we're really excited that we still have a few more days here in Singapore and we'll be exploring a lot more from food to also some not food related things. So we'll see you in the next video.